بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا رسول الله With the name of Allah, the gracious, the compassionate All praise be to Allah and peace and blessings be upon his final prophet and messenger Muhammad I openly declare that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and I openly declare that Muhammad is his final prophet and messenger for all time to come Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We like to talk today about the importance of one of the great virtues in Islam. And indeed, it is a virtue that without which all human beings would be lost. Allah the Almighty has said in his noble book, Al Quran, in the chapter entitled Al Asr, Bismillah ar Rahman Rahim, Wal Asr in al Insana lafi khusr, illa ladina amanu. وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر. Allah swears by the time as it passes, every human being is in a state of loss except for those who have the correct belief and who follow that belief with correct action, good deeds, and who call together with the mutual teaching of truth, who give the da'wah and invite to the way of their Lord, and who are patient upon that in the face of all adversity. Here we see patience is a necessary prerequisite for success in this life as well as in the hereafter. Patience is our topic today and we want to discuss it in a way that hopefully it will bring us some benefit. We know that one of the names or attributes of Almighty God Allah is a sabur He is the most patient. And we know that it is from Allah that we acquire patience. Patience is something that is needed in order to meet the challenges in life and in order to meet the adversities and trials that we confront. It is helpful to know that while patience is a virtue amongst human beings, it is not something that other creatures in the creation possess. For example, animals, don't necessarily or are not known to possess patience. They operate basically upon instinct that Allah has instilled upon them. Also, we know that the creation of the angels is not something that demonstrates patience. The angels are created only to obey Allah, and therefore they have no need for patience. But it is the human being who has been given the opportunity to choose which course he would take between right or wrong that requires patience. So patience for the Muslim is an act of worship, much like his prayer or fasting or giving charity or making hajj. In fact, it is one of the most difficult acts of worship that the Muslim can perform because it requires us to be patient when perhaps our own desires want us to be impatient. The scholars of our ummah have told us that patience is of three types. The first type of patience is patience in obeying Allah, in doing what Allah has commanded. And indeed, this is very, very important because when Allah commands us to fulfill our obligations of worship, such as the five daily prayers or giving zakat or fasting in Ramadan and making hajj, from looking at each of these acts of worship, we find that patience is a necessary condition in order for those acts of worship or those rites to be fulfilled. When we look at the performance of Salah, we have to know that in order to 
perform the prayer correctly, we must have the proper disposition or the proper frame of mind, what is called khushu or humility. And this can only be had by being patient. If one is impatient in his salah, then in all likelihood he will not be able to demonstrate the proper humility or khushu that is required. He will be in a rush to get through his salah. He will be in a rush to recite the Quran. When he's in congregational prayer following the imam, he will hope that the imam will not recite a long surah, but that he will recite the shorter surah that he possibly can, so he can get back to his daily life. This is not a demonstration of patience that the Muslim should show. The Muslim must show in his ibadah the patience that is reflective of a beautiful patience that Allah SWT is most pleased with. When we think in terms of fasting during Ramadan, we are required to practice patience because throughout the course of the day, we are experiencing the pains of hunger and thirst and perhaps the desires of, of wanting to be with our spouses. But because of the fast, we are required to wait until the specified time of sunset in order for those desires, those naturally lawful desires to be fulfilled. So this requires patience. When we go on hard, we find an environment that tests our patience in a very, very difficult way. Sometimes we may lose our possessions on hajj. We may get sick during hajj. We may get into arguments with others over little things. And these experiences require patience. So, dear brothers and sisters, let us reflect on the importance of patience in our lives. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in a very beautiful hadith that the affair of the Muslim is indeed ajeeb. It is marvelous or strange. And this is exclusively for the believer, that when good happens to him, when good fortune comes his way, he shows gratitude to his Lord. And when adversity or calamity comes his way, then he is patient with that. And in that is also a, bl a blessing or reward. So we find Allah mentioning in the Quran many, many references to patience as much as 90 times in the verses throughout the Quran Allah makes mention of the importance of patience as a, as a quality or characteristic of the believers. Indeed, Allah has instructed us to seek his help with patience and with the salah, and that he loves those who are patient. He tells us in Surah Az-Zumar, mashallah, that إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّى صَابِرُونَ أَجْرُهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حساب. That verily, the reward of the patient has no no limit or no uh, counting, no uh, counting or reckoning. So there are great rewards for being patient, and we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase us in patience. In fact, there's a very beautiful dua that we can learn. Rabbana afigalayna sabra. Rabbana afigalayna sabra. Wa thabit aqdamina. When surana ala al qawm al kafirin, our Lord pour out patience upon us and plant our feet firmly in this deen and help us against those who reject faith. Know for sure, brothers and sisters, when you ask for patience, Allah is going to test your patience. He's going to put you in situations that will try your patience and make us learn patience. Patience is not just waiting for something to happen and not putting forth an effort. It's waiting for the decree of Allah to pass while we put forth the best effort in order to bring about what is best. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. In today's society, we see so many examples of impatience. In fact, we have learned from our scholars that impatience or haste is from the shaitan. So whenever we want to do something and we're in a rush, we have to be careful and ask ourselves, is this because we want to do it for Allah? Or could it be that the shaitan or the enemy of God in the human being is prompting us to be impatient and to rush? You see? The society, mashallah ta'ala, that we live in encourages impatience. Just the very nature of society in the marketplace today encourages one not to want to wait. Everything today is a quick fix. You see, in a throwaway society that we live in, we have to remember that patience is indeed a most important virtue and quality that will enable us to please Allah, walhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. You look at the, in America, the fast food industry is the 
perhaps the fastest growing industry in America. And what it promotes is getting your food in such a fast uh, amount of time that you don't take time to eat it, you gobble it down while you're on the go, and then you off again, you know? And it takes us away from the benefit of sitting at home and being with our family and having a family meal, you see? Everything today is promoting the human being to be impatient and to want, you see, his, his reward right now. Example, another example, in America, they have what is called the lottery or the, the system of gambling that brings a quick reward or quick benefit if you go and you buy a ticket and then you have the lucky number and you win a large sum of money. There's no patience in this, but there's also no trust in Allah as the provider. So we want to ask Allah that we want and need more patience. We want to ask Allah to increase us in patience, to show us the importance of the virtue of patience and practice this in our own lives and in the lives of our families. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Stay with us as we continue our discussion on the virtue and benefits of patience. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back as we continue in our discussion on the virtues of patience. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. We learn from the history of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that patience was a virtue that he taught to his companions during the early part of his mission. For without patience, the companions would not have been able to endure the many hardships that they had to face in the Meccan period. We find many, many times the need for patience practiced by the companions at a time when they were outnumbered by the Meccan Quraysh who could have very well obliterated or killed them had they tried to confront them for the injustices that were meted out to the believers. But the Prophet ﷺ taught the Muslims to be patient. For indeed, one of the beautiful sayings of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is that nothing happens to the believer, even if it's as small as a pinprick, without it being a means of forgiveness for his sins or raising his rank in Jannah. So for the Muslim, Patience is a necessary ingredient to endure the hardships and trials of life. As our scholars have mentioned, patience is of three types. And in our earlier part of the discussion, we discussed the first type of patience, that is the patience in obedience to Allah. The second type of patience is to be patient in refraining from what Allah has made unlawful. And it takes patience to stay away from the haram. It takes patience to avoid those things that Allah has made unlawful. For example, in a society that has no regard for the modesty of dress, that shows no shame in revealing the beautiful parts of the human body, it takes patience in both the man and the woman to adhere to the commandments of Allah and to stay away from what he has forbidden. So when we see the men and women in society removing their clothes, then we should do what Allah has commanded of us, and that is to turn away, to cast our gaze downward. It requires patience for the man and woman to refrain from unlawful sex before marriage in a society that says it's okay to have sex at any time. You see, regardless of whether you're married or not, with whomever you like, regardless of whether they're married or not, how many times have we seen our families destroyed because of the absence of patience? How often impatience shows its face? You see, when it comes to even in the, the governmental affairs of society in countries, the fact that two countries cannot negotiate their differences sometimes results in aggression, harmful aggression, one against another, simply because patience was abandoned. So patience is a necessary prerequisite for rectifying or reconciling our affairs, both in our individual or family life, as well as in the collective or community life. The third aspect of patience that the scholars have informed us of is that we must be patient with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, every human being faces trials and tribulations in his life. Allah the Almighty has created this life as a test to see which of us are best in conduct. Therefore, we must expect that our lives are going to be fraught with hardships, with difficulties, with unexpected calamities. And it is the 
instruction of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that encourages us to be patient in the face of such difficulties. Indeed, it is narrated on the authority of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, may Allah be pleased with him. He asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, O Messenger of Allah, who are those who are tested the most? And our beloved Nabi wa Rasul alayhi salatu salam said, those who are tested the most are the prophets and the messengers. And then after them, the righteous ones from among them. And he said, the tests are given in accordance with the degree of our faith. So that if our faith is weak, indeed Allah is merciful and most just. And the test he gives us will be a, a small test. But if our faith is stronger, the tests will be greater in accordance with the strength of our faith. And then he said that we, the human beings, will walk on this earth continuing to be tested until we walk on this earth sinless. So these tests are not required to destroy us or to make life difficult, but it's to bring the best out of us. And so we're obligated and required to learn patience as the means to deal with these unexpected turn of events in our lives. Many times people who don't have patience, they may resort to destroying themselves. They may resort to using intoxicants, using drugs or alcohol, or they may even resort to committing suicide because they don't have the patience to face the calamities. When we show patience with the decree of Allah, this shows that we are content with whatever Allah has decreed for us, that we know that Allah knows best for us and that he is most just and that he would not be unjust to us giving us something that we do not deserve. Indeed, alhamdulillah, the adversities bring the best out of the human being. The word fitna or trial also has uh, in it the implied meaning of bringing or turning uh, the dross metal into gold, turning the, the base metal into the best of itself being the gold. So, these trials and tribulations that we face in life, they require patience in order to get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they also serve as a means of forgiveness for our sins. So we have to know that patience is a virtue and it is also an ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about often in the Quran. Alhamdulillah, we should be careful not to follow the footsteps of the shaitan by being hasty or by being impatient. And we know when, it, when we're children, you, we learn the lesson from the children because they are not uh, developed maturely uh, in their thinking and in their emotions. So oftentimes they don't demonstrate patience, what they want when they want it. They make all kinds of uh, demands upon the parents simply because they are immature in their development. But once we have matured as human beings and grown to a level of adults where we uh, have sound reasoning and understanding, then we're expected to exercise patience. Unfortunately, many of us, even as adults, lack the patience that we need to face the difficulties of life. We have to be patient in every endeavor and know that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will give us what we need when we need it. We should not be impatient with the dua of Allah, with the supplications that we give to Allah. One of the reasons that our prayers are not answered is because we may be impatient with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We may think that Allah should bless us right now when we want it, when in fact Allah will bless us when he sees fit. So this requires patience. Patience, my dear brothers and sisters, is a, a virtue that will help to calm the passions of the society, that will help to calm the emotions uh, and not uh, cause us to destroy ourselves. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked his companions who was the best wrestler, they told him it was the one who could subdue the other. And he corrected them and said, no, the best wrestler is the one who can subdue his anger when he has the means to carry it out. In order to subdue our anger, we have to exhibit patience. You see? So patience is something that all of us should strive to do. When we ask Allah for patience, know that he is going to put us in situations that will require us to be patient. It may be that we are driving at, in our cars and we have to get to a certain destination by a certain time and because we are impatient, we could maybe be inclined to want to run the red light or run the stop sign 
you see, or not put on our seatbelt, when in fact it only takes a few seconds to be patient, you see, to wait for the light to change, or to wait for the next car to go, to yield to the right of way, or to put the seatbelt on. How many times we've heard tragic incidences of children being killed in cars, adults being thrown from cars because they were in an accident where they did not put their seatbelts on. You see, and this took patience. Alhamdulillah, it takes patience to do the right thing. Alhamdulillah. When we are practicing our deen, it requires us to be patient. If we know that we have to make wudu before salah, then we must take the time that it is needed in order to perform it properly. We don't overlook it or take it for granted. And we go through the necessary steps that were taught to us so that we know that we're doing it correctly. When we're making the salah, we make sure that we go through the, the process of performing salah in a patient manner, not rushing to hurry up and get through it so that we can move on to the next thing that we want to do. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. When we are engaged in business, it takes patience to wait for your business to turn a profit. You see, so that means that we're not going to do anything unlawful to try to get the profit before the time that the profit is going to be given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it is Allah who is a razaq, a khayr raziqeen. He is the provider and the best of those to provide. So it takes patience for us to wait for our business to blossom and to bring success to us. We won't cheat. We won't lie or steal. And these things are done when we have no patience. Most of the criminal acts that we see performed today are as a result of the lack of patience, the inability to control one's emotions, and being subject to... Uh, chemical substances that alter the thinking and cloud the mind, cloud the reasoning. When we have patience as a virtue, it becomes a weapon for us to be able to withstand the difficulties that we are bound to encounter in life. So many instances we see patience being demonstrated by Allah's messengers and the companions of the Prophet So dear brothers and sisters, let us not uh, think lightly of this virtue, the virtue of sabr, for indeed Allah is sabur, he loves those, uh, sabreen, and he is with those who demonstrate patience. Patience is something that we need more of in the world, because without it, we will find our passions run amok, we will find our desires going wild, we will find our emotions uncontrolled and unbridled, and so much harm comes from the lack of patience. So inshallah ta'ala, we want to encourage you to practice patience and ask Allah to give you patience because he is the source of all sabr, the source of all patience. Allah has said in Quran, to seek help with patience and the prayer, for indeed Allah is with those who are patient. We cannot underestimate the value and importance of patience in our lives, and we should ask Allah to constantly pour out patience upon us. We pray that Allah will make us among those who are sabreen. We pray that Allah will make us among those whose feet are planted firmly in this deen. And we pray that Allah will make us of those who carry out the mission of Islam and who represent Islam in the best manner. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.